Welcome back to the lab. Wednesday morning. Today we are going to carry on with this beastie here. We've got our oil catch can. How dare you headbutt me. We've got our oil catch can going on there. Really um, decent sized radiator overflow tank there. You 300 ZX guys are going to ask if you can buy one of these, aren't you? And if we get bored with that, it's starting to look quite good, isn't it? There's a few stragglers hanging around, some lines that need to be connected and some plugs. That... If we get bored with that, there's the, uh, the, the Z, it's not a Z, the R33 here. We need to make a drive shaft hoop under here. I know what, let's do something, um, let's do something else. Let's go and put that on the dyno and see if we can make a thousand horsepower or break it. One or the other. Dunno, just like that. So, just about ready to go. I'm gonna put some more sensors on to our ports that we put on the exhaust earlier on. Not these ones, the ones that are actually onto the manifolds there. See that? That, that, there you go. And then put some of those on there. Made this up this morning. Exhaust manifold pressure sensor adapter doofliki thingamy what's it. So we just put a pressure sensor onto here via some silicon hose or whatever. And then we'll know what's happening with back pressure from the turbos to tell us whether the turbines are too small or not, or perhaps whether the exhaust system is too small or not. Uh, just took all the spark plugs out. We had sixes in there. It was actually the factory temp range spark plug for that motor without boost uh, they're like nines in there now i think it is because we are going to run it a little bit leaner to try and make them more horsepowers we'll see what it'll do um yeah oh, i think i think this is from last time it was here i'm not going to fidget around with things that's that's the, the how much torques it had at the roundy thing at the motor i was like 825 newton meters peak by the looks of it but if you sort of took the average we're looking at like 800 newton meters from um, a bit more than 4,000 rpm through to 6,000 rpm. So she's pretty good. Pulls pretty hard. Uh, this is our. This is what the mixtures were bank to bank. It always seems to have just a tiny discrepancy for whatever reason. Um, not not lean. Quite rich-ish, but that's all right. It's safe. Gets a little bit leaner towards the end. That one actually into. A lot leaner didn't it well a lot it's not um we're not dealing with huge numbers right i'm gonna warm it up and then uh, we'll, we'll see what we do next rightio rinse and repeat you guys have seen this a million times so i've put a couple sensors on there ran it up compared it to what this was saying over here found one sensor is probably dodgy took it out replaced it with a known good one everything's looking good we're just measuring the lambda on the ports on the say rear two but you guys understand the engine is backwards so cylinders five and six which are at the, the back of the engine which is at the front uh, we just those are the ones that are likely to be dodgy if anything in my opinion it's a starting point a bit noisy back here sorry everybody uh, because they run through oh, come around there you go so we're measuring this one because it comes through a longer tube the other two are very short tubes we'll check those later but at this point without putting any load on it just running the revs up we're seeing there's no issues with mixtures but we'll see what happens a little bit of blow by it's an old motor we know that we're going to give it a beating and see what it does
enjoy that. There's lovely noises coming from in there. I'd say you can probably hear that for a wee while. <laughs> be quick because we're running out of day uh, we've had a failure the old electricery box stopped electricerizing so there was no more juice for the electricery and it stopped uh, went down the road to they sort us out with one of these these are not cheap but um, that fits in the hole where the other one was the only thing we've got to change is the um, the terminals, these are 8mm thread and the previous one I had drilled out to 6mm, it started as 5 So I'll get this back in and it'll be going again. Um, first dyno pull without any tuning or changing of anything and it made 700 and I think it was 18 or 19 um, horsepower at the wheels. So it's still plus 500 kilowatts without doing anything. Um, but we can see there are some losses due to the lower compression in the bigger turbos. But anyway, I better crack on. Okay, it's pretty late. Um, to summarise, I've missed a few things, no doubt. Uh, battery died, that sucked, but there's a new one in there, so that's good, that's fixed. That kind of interrupted our day a little bit. In the meantime, we confirmed that, yeah, 100%, we were running out of injected duty cycle. In fact, it was at basically 100% so that was 900 horsepower worth of fuel going into the car although the tune wasn't optimal so I'm not saying it was making 900 uh, at that point it was something like 720 horsepower at the wheels or something like that we bumped up the fuel pressure I think half a bar redid all the dead time tables for our um, 
ID 1300X injectors, 1300cc injectors. Um, then went through, Adrian retuned the whole map and found that the resolution wasn't that great, so adjusted the um, millisecond. So the base, the base size for the injectors, right, and then, then all your numbers on your graph are all based on that. So you make that number smaller and then you've got more room to move on your graph more resolution. Uh, so we did all that, so that chewed up quite a bit of time, but that was all very worthwhile. Um, ran the car and made some good horsepower and adjusted the boost and made some even more gooder horsepower. So we came in uh, on, on this bottom line here. Um, maybe it wasn't because that's under, that's about 690 or something, isn't it? Now we were about 725 or something. That might be the initial run. And then this was things were adjusted. And anyway, this is where we're at now, which is just over 750. So it was literally 760 horsepower. It's not showing on those numbers there because we're at these points here. So those numbers there correlate to these curses here. Um, you can see lower compression. So we have got less torque right at the very bottom end. However, we've, we've upped the boost a little bit to make up for that. And we're basically we are winning everywhere except for a tiny little bit there um, more power than it's ever had so it is a grunter and um, if you're good at math or not 760 times 1.2 assuming a 20% drivetrain loss is just over 900 horsepower so um, that thing in there tuned correctly and running correctly that is that's a 900 horsepower motor right there in a K12 March. Yeehaw, I'll tell you what man, standing here and that thing, full noise, the heat that is coming out of here, it's insane, crazy, it's far too loud to be in here without earmuffs on. It's awesomeness. Right, we're probably doing one more pull, I think, I'm not sure, and then, um, then it's home time, everything's all loaded up, ready to go outside, we're just gonna put this on and then we can go. Yeah, so it's Monday now, so the little beastie was on the dyno a few days ago. Now I've finally got it on the hoist and drained the oil out of the transfer box and um, it's perfect, nothing wrong with that. So, and also drained the oil out of the sequential gearbox. It's perfect, nothing wrong with that either. Uh, I had a look at the oil in the engine, yeah, it's fine and we didn't blow any coolant out of the coolant system or anything like that. In fact, the little beastie took it all in her stride. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. There was maybe quarter of a teaspoon of oil in one of the under trays from the little sump tank thingy that I've made for the turbochargers. Might have a little pinhole in it there somewhere. I couldn't actually see where it was coming from. Don't care. So I don't know how many pulls it did at 700 odd horsepower at the hubs, um, ran through 40 litres of petrol so that's quite a lot quite a few that's quite a few kilowatt hours consumed and turned into tree food so that's good we're saving the environment and stuff and things so it's awesome sitting up there looking pretty the mighty internet uh, generally pretty good response you know I mean it was a really popular post posting up the picture of the this is a transfer box up there see Look at that. Um, 
of the the car in the dyno room oh look i spilt some oil when i changed the oil but look it's clean you can see it's clean it's good it's beautiful um about the only thing that went wrong we didn't even have to change the spark plugs we knew we might need to so i changed them beforehand uh there's quite a lot of um quite a lot of hot coming out of there quite fast and it literally tore my um heat protecting stuff to bits blew it a bit or burnt it or whatever the carbon fiber is fine but you can see there's a bit of soot there see and look the roll see the soot's up there as well because it stays attached you see it does it does work so yeah pretty good um cheers in general for the good response from the mighty internet for what we've just done with this this is just maths right you just put the right pieces in the car and you do the right things with it and it makes the power speaking of making power i shouldn't mention them but stuff i'm going to call them out some some dude on the internet reckoned um he, what did he say his initial comment was but it doesn't have the original motor well duh like you can't make a not the stock motor from these things there's absolutely no way you can physically make that thing make that much power that is impossible there will be no parts left of it to make that power you'd have to start with a billet block a billet crank everything you'd have to remake it as a completely different motor and even then you're only dealing with a 1400 cc four cylinder motor you're never getting 950 horsepower out of that dude come on so then he says also oh, you did it the easy way yeah yeah i'm sure i'm sure that that's the easy way obviously he's got some sort of mental health issues going on but whatever so aside from him <laughs> that's a pretty good response so that's great uh we've been invited to what's it called northland street sprint up in wangarei wangarei yeah it's up in wangarei um in like three weeks time so we'll have a look we'll see we might might be doing that and trying out the 772 horsepower at the hubs tried out up there and see what it does the, mi the mighty dino says that um because it can do the math right it knows what the torque is at the hubs and knows the diameter of the wheels so it knows how much force it's putting on the ground if you tell it how much it weighs it can tell you how quickly it will accelerate and the dino reckons in the third gear it should pull 1.2 g's of acceleration i.e it'll accelerate 20 percent faster than if you drop it from a crane uh, that's what it was doing with the old tune in first gear which was pretty accelerate uh pretty exciting was the word i was looking for so that'll be interesting thanks for watching like share subscribe hit the notification bell share 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 get it around world's most powerful in march maybe i don't know there, there could be other contenders and i don't know all right cheers boy